Hey everyone, this is Jane with Barlow Herbal and happy March 27th. It is the last Sunday of March of 2022, which there you go, time is buzzing on by, isn't it? I mean, we've got the first quarter almost wrapping up. And like we always like to say, time tends to speed up, tends to go really fast. In fact, my nephew, Ben, who I've shared a couple of interviews with him because he's an author and he's written some great books. The very first book he wrote is called Slipstream Time Hacking, where he basically teaches you how to slow down time. And that might be something to bring back. I know he's thinking about bringing this back, updating it and bringing this back as a, as a published book. It was his very first book um, a long time ago. Uh, it's a pretty cool concept. Now, as you can see by the sun shining in the window over there, it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful day. We've had this amazing weekend so far here in Utah, mid seventies, crazy, beautiful sunshine, um, warmth. It's spring is in the air. In fact, in our front yard, we have all of these tulip bulbs that uh, come up every, every year and they're already about this high. And it's kind of like you have a few warm days here in Utah and things just start to, to bud out and, uh, the colors, the leaves, the newness. It's, I mean, this is why I love spring so much. It's just a rebirth and a reminder of life and the miracle of this beautiful planet. So I have a really great message for you today. Now, some of you might be familiar with uh, a, a woman named Bronnie Ware. She was a hospice nurse and she wrote uh, a list of the five regrets of dying people. And I know that, I believe she wrote a book about it. I know she has a beautiful website. And I discovered her a few years ago. And knowing this list really changed the way that I walk through this life. Because I think we all um, hope that, and maybe pray that we're going to have a really, really long, healthy life. But none of us knows when it's our time to go. And I think that if we can live in these beautiful amazing times that we're in and simply look at it that way too, it can really change the way that we walk through life and the way we end our life whenever that is with no regrets, because that is the goal, right? So what Bronnie did is during her time as a hospice nurse, as she was helping these patients prepare to transition, um, there would probably be conversations and there would be things that she would hear in the final moments or the final few days and maybe even final few weeks. And she started compiling, compiling a list of what these people would say were, were their regrets. And time and time again, some of these same things would come up over and over and over again. So she has this list of, it's a reminder to live, but it, it's the five regrets of dying people. And I would suggest you look, look it up, look her up. She's got some really beautiful work and it is a really beautiful reminder to take care of business, take care of the things we need to take care, care of, but live in the moment, live in the now. Every single time you think about it and you fill your lungs with oxygen, give gratitude, give grace for this beautiful, incredible moment that you have to be alive, be with your loved ones, everything that that comes with. So the very first one, which is amazing. And I think that these are in order of how many people actually said this was their number one regret, this is number two, and et cetera. So the first one is, I wish I had the courage, I'd I wish I'd had the courage to live a true, a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Now, that is a big one. That's a big statement to say, because who here has found themselves caught in doing things to make other people happy. It might be a job that maybe you grew up in a family of all lawyer, lawyers and your parents expect you to be a lawyer. So you went through your life and you were a lawyer. It, it could be that. It could be working in a family business that's a, passed on from even just one generation or several generations. And you worked in this business because it was expected of you. And you didn't have the courage to follow your dreams. You know, this is a big one. And I will tell you, I have per way personal experience with this because when I started my dad's business, I was actually doing something that I loved, but I was miserable in the in where I, it had taken me in my career. 
So the first half of my adult life with, with working, I was in the fitness industry and I taught fitness classes. I sold health club memberships. I helped open a few clubs. And at the end of my fitness career, toward the end, I actually built my own health club with one of my sisters here in Salt Lake City. I love everything fitness and nutrition. I still do. There's something that's a big passion for me. And then at the end of when the business with my sister didn't work out, because as we know, businesses are tough and working with families are tough and just new businesses are tough. But what happened is then I went to work for a chain of health, health, um, health clubs and I was a manager. And it was, it was good because I was in the gym industry and I understood fitness and I loved getting people going on fitness programs and I loved managing this particular gym that I was managing, but it was corporate. And the expectations as far as the work hours and what they would expect for production, like you have to sell this many memberships, we have to make this much money. It was, it reached a point where it was just, it, I was not happy anymore. I mean, I loved the people, I loved the members, I loved teaching my fitness classes, which I did. I did, I taught fitness classes for 20 more years after um, I started doing my, this business I'm doing now. But what I realized when I was just about 40 and my kids were, I had my kids when I was really young. I was 20 when I had my first one and 21 when I had my second one. So when I was about 40 and I was in this corporate fitness situation, my kids were pretty much grown up at that point. Now they were still figuring some stuff out, but I did not have little kids at home, not even teenagers. So I realized pretty quickly that there had to be more to life than this. And this is kind of when the whole thing happened where there was some percolating information about my dad's business and someone needed to carry on his work. And I knew that it was gonna be, be a struggle to carry on my dad's work but I knew that I wanted to be happy. And that was my main goal. And so I was a, a little bit before I turned 40, I restarted my dad's company. And it was amazing because it, it was hard work. And it still to this day is, you know, 20 years later, it's a lot of hard work. But the difference is, is that, I, that I'm happy. And it did take courage. You have to take a risk. So the main word, in fact, I, this little list of five, I underlined a word in each of these sentences. And the main word I underlined here is the word courage, because it does take courage to do what your desire is in this life. And what I've found is when you're in the service of people, you find something that, that needs to be served. Like where can I serve with what I love to do? And it might, you might in your mind think, there's no way I can make a living at this, but I think you would be surprised. And, you know, it took me a long time to become, you know, successful enough to make a really good living because my, luckily my husband was very supportive and, and I know sometimes people don't have that and it can be a little bit more challenging. And I would say if you're in that situation, and I know I've brought this up before, and I think even recently, if you're in a situation where maybe you can't follow the exact dream that you want as far as career wise, um, find a way to be happy and to find joy and find gratitude in the current position you find yourself in. And then on the times that you're not working in the evening, early in the morning, on the weekends, take that time and follow your dreams and follow what makes you tick. Because then you're taking that time instead of sitting in front of TV and you're making it work for you. There's always a way to follow your dreams if you have the courage to do that. And that's, there's no doubt that there's a reason that that is number one. And I love, I really love that. Now, the second one I find really fascinating, but I also find really true. And the second regret that dying people have is I wish I hadn't worked so hard. Now this you hear all the time. And I think what happens is we think I, I'll slow down when I retire. Uh, I'll relax when I retire. I'll relax on the weekend. And I, I really believe that we miss so many beautiful moments and beautiful things. And I, you know, as I was kind of thinking this week about what I wanted to bring on my Sunday message, we set up a, 
um, an overnight sleepover with my grandkids on Friday. And so my husband was like, we're going to go to the zoo on Friday. It's supposed to be perfect weather. In fact, this is where the mid seventies started was on Friday. And why don't you come with us? And most of the time I don't, my work days are seriously so busy, but I realized pretty quickly, okay, what am I doing? I'm missing out on a day at the zoo with my grandkids. So Friday I took most of the day and I spent it a good chunk of it at the zoo with my husband, my grandkids. One of my sisters was in town with her grown daughter and her granddaughter. And it was just a lovely afternoon. And you know what? Nobody missed me. <laughs> All the things that I had to do, um, there's might've been some things that I needed to, uh, pay attention to, but all the stuff that little fires I need to put out or things that needed my immediate attention were already taken care of. And I could literally work 24 seven, partly because I love it so much. Like I love what I do. And I do think that makes a difference. But for people like me, who, who really has such a passion for what we, for what we do and what I do, um, we have to really step out of that and pay attention to some of the moments relationship family moments, things that really make a difference for us. And this can go along with things like taking care of your physical body, exercising every day, getting out in nature. Some of these things are critically important. And I personally do not want to get to the end of my life and have regrets. I don't think any of us do. So that one, I, I, I think it is really important. I think we all get caught on the hamster wheel in some form or the other. And I think if we can find a way to simplify our life with the things that we need so that we're not always so driven with how much money we think we need or how much we want, um, there's, there's a balance between all of that. And I think we need to find it individually and find what works for us. So I know that there's a lot of nuances that come along with that, with that whole piece because I count myself in, in that category of a person who so loves what I do and love, love my work and all of that. Okay, so number three, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. And the word I underlined in here was express. Now, I have personal experience, and I'm sure every single human alive has personal experience with being unable to express how we really feel at certain times. And maybe you're a person who's really good at this, and someone says something to you that maybe hurt your feelings, or that you, um, they do something to bother you. And you're not able to say it because maybe you don't want to be a nagger. Maybe you um, don't aren't sure how to express it. You're not sure how they're going to take it. You don't you don't want to hurt their feelings, you know, whatever that might be. For me, I, you know, I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist, and this is something I I work on on a regular basis. And honestly, the the more that I practice it and realize I'm is that just a, something I really have to worry about? Uh, like my thing is crumbs on the counter you know, in the kitchen, which if you think about it, it's ridiculous, right? That I would get, you know, I would suppress feelings, uh, feelings of anger or rage or whatever about a messy, you know, crumbs all over the counter because you know what I should do? Just go wash it up. And I've realized that that's what I do. And if you have been with me for a while, you'll know that I've released six interviews with the author of the book called The Great Pain Deception. His name is Stephen Ozonich. And it's been a couple years now since I've done an interview with him. And I think it might be time for a new one because this is so important. Our body creates physical pain when we have emotional pain that we don't have the ability to express. And this, this is a beautiful, beautiful concept. If you're in chronic pain, something that's not caused by an injury, say you have an injury, that injury heals. It doesn't continue to cause you pain, but it does give a place for emotional pain to go and your, your, your brain wants to protect you. So because the emotional pain can be so painful, it'll give you pain somewhere else in your body. And this is real, real pain. And it will basically distract you from the emotional pain. And so I have personal experience with this. And for me, it was perfectionism and, and other things too, that I wasn't able to express. If I was having an anger moment, at someone, my, my husband or one of my siblings or someone I needed, one of my, what, where, who, ever, and I wasn't able to express it, 
I, my body would create debilitating physical pain. And it mostly happened in like my knees. I would have problems with my feet. And, you know, if you look at different things like uh, the, the parts of your body that have pain, it's a direct correlation with, think about if you have uh, a neck pain, it's basically something is a pain in your neck. And if you look at Louise Hay's work, she, it, it, this is all about that. For me, it's usually pain in my one knee in particular, and then I have, and sometimes my feet can give me a lot, of, and this has been for a long time, and that's stability. This is our foundation. If you think about maybe I don't feel stable because I can't express my feelings. Anyway, this conversation about this is a huge, big topic. And this is another reason that I have literally got six interviews with this incredible human that has put out very, very important work. And I think this is the missing puzzle piece to full on vibrant health. Because you can take a bunch of supplements, you can eat really clean, you can do yoga and meditate and exercise and get out in nature. And then if you have unexpressed rage, anger, whatever emotions that we all have as humans, it's not anything to be embarrassed about, but we don't have an outlet for them or we're not able to express them, then we, our body protects us with physical pain. And this can be a very difficult concept to absorb and to wrap your head around. And it's not, like I said, it's not something that's all in your head. It is, a, it is very, very real. So check those out. They're on a playlist on this YouTube channel. And it's under Steve Ozonich um, interviews. And there's six of them. And you can watch any one of them. I think they're all very powerful. And I think it would change your life. And then here's one other thing I do. I believe I talked about this in a couple of videos ago. And this is something that's made a huge difference for me in being able to express my emotions because we don't want to just throw out ugly, hateful, rage filled words or emotions at people. We want to get them out in a, in a productive way. That's not going to damage a relationship or damage someone else's feelings. So I actually have a rage journal and I, it's, you know, it's just a, basically a plain notebook and I call it my rage journal and I'm able to write things down that I can get everything out that I need to get out and it validates my emotions and it literally gets them out. And I would really suggest that if you are someone who feels like this would benefit you, put this into place. Now, this is not a journal you're going to go back and read over and over. This is something that you, I shred it. Like I will go the next day, I'll read it again, I'll validate my feelings and then I'll put it through a shredder because I do not, not only want to look at these emotions anymore, especially after I've gotten them out. I don't want anyone to go find them and read them. And, you know, cause I've gotten some very ugly things off my chest and it's been, it's powerful and it is a way to express. And then I've also found a way to really communicate in a kind, loving, respectful way. If I need to express feelings that I have, and I would really suggest that you learn to have emotional flexibility and you're able to do that especially with the people that you love. And it's important with everyone, but especially with the people that you love. So that one is amazing. Okay, number four, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. <laughs> that one says it all, right? So if there's people in your life that you care about, reach out, reach out on a regular basis, send them a text, thinking about you, I love you. Give a phone call, pick up the phone, talk for a few minutes. Meet someone for coffee, meet someone for brunch, have them over for dinner, be, be social, stay in touch with the people that you love. And don't be afraid to bring new people into your friendship circle, especially if you resonate with, with them. In fact, I think these last two years, especially for me, have proven that it's really important to stay in, in touch with the people that are your tribe. It's, it's, it's been one of the most important things that I've really realized as in particular these last two years. Okay. Now the last one on here is, is pretty powerful. This one is, I wish I had let myself be happier. Oh boy. Right. Okay. I think we just, um, hear something bad that's happening. Um, and instead of thinking, and like, I, like I talked about last week, as far as, uh, is fear an illusion? A lot of the things that's happening out in the world, I'm not saying they're not real and I'm not saying everything is just fake. But if you look at your day-to-day -day life, 
you know, I drive down the street in my neighborhood when I'm coming into my house and I think about the neighbors that are in my neighborhood and the interactions I've had with them. I even think about an interaction I just had with someone in the grocery store, just as maybe I'm coming home from the grocery store. And it's loving and beautiful and they're kind and they're, the service is good. And, and I know there's situations sometimes when it's not always perfect, but if we could let ourselves see the beauty of the moments in our life and let ourselves be happy. Like that's, that's a, maybe a tall order, <laughs> but to me, let's live happier. Let's not be caught in emotions of fear and desperation and depression and sadness. I mean, there are moments when we, when we do feel these things, it's not discounting that. But I do think we all have opportunities on a really regular basis to simply let ourselves be happy. So let's take that. Let's take that into the spring of 2022 and all of the joy and all of the possibilities of a new season, um, a year that we're a quarter into, and all of the things that we know that we have as humans that are blessings that we can give gratitude for and we can just simply let ourselves be happy. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. It's always so fun to think about what I wanna to talk to you today and uh, just kind of share my thoughts because for the most part, it really reiterates these beautiful, amazing things that I have in my life uh, and it reminds me to live, live them. So thank you. Thank you for uh, letting me have this platform and piping in. Uh, don't forget to sus subscribe. Give me a comment on what you think of some of these things and especially the whole possibility of getting to the end of our life and having no regrets. I really, really love that. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. It's always a pleasure and we will see you next time.